One really nice thing that CSS Grid is good for is when you have an application rather than a website. And I mean that like when the entire browser is uh, multiple windows. Sometimes you got scrolling and, and you got different parts and pieces and they all needs to fit into however big the actual viewport is. And CodePen is a great example of this where you've got your, your title, you've got all these different places to write your code. You have a preview window. You've got some settings down here. So what we're going to be doing in this exercise is creating CodePen uh, from scratch. So I've started you off with some HTML. And uh, the, the idea behind the HTML, let's uh, do a quick inspect element on this, is that it's four main parts. So if you look, we have a div of the class of code pen. That's the entire thing. And then inside of that, we have our pen, which is the, the sort of the header. And we have the code, which is those three panes. The preview, which is like just an iframe to preview it. And the settings, which is the little bar at the bottom here. And then inside of each of those, they are all their sort of smaller subset grid. So if this is something you would like to uh, maybe try yourself, uh, please go ahead and, and give it a shot. Um, I did do it entirely in CSS grid, though there's a lot of use cases where you could use uh, Flexbox as well. So let's open up style-start if you're going to go ahead with me. And I've provided you with a very minimal, there's no grid stuff. This is just sort of your, your base setting the font size and the color and, and whatnot. Uh, so I'm going to open this one up. Code pen start. Good. So this is what we're we're looking at, and let's actually go ahead and start with the the main code pen, and we're going to dice it up into different pieces. So, uh, how big are these things going to be? Well, the the four different pieces are. I want the header to take up as much room as it needs. I want the footer to take up as much room as it needs. And then these two ones, I just want to sort of split the difference uh, between the two. And uh, in a real code pen, you're able to resize it and, and whatnot because they use some JavaScript. But uh, I did my best with just CSS. That's as far as I could get it. And there's no vertical resize. But if you like that, some JavaScript, you can. So we're going to grab our code pen and we're going to display grid on that. Then we need to cut it up into the four different pieces. And in this case, it's not actually columns. It's going to be rows. So GTR, grid template, rows. And we want it to be auto, the first one to be auto size, the next one to be 1FR, the next one to 1FR, and then auto. And what that should do, it's a little bit hard to see it. So first, we're going to have to uh, be closing our dev tool so we can get the, um, the full look of what it's like. And then we'll also take our code pen each of the direct descendants, each of the items, and we'll just put a border, 1px solid black, just so we can see where each of the items is. Now, this is not working because shouldn't this code assets and command, shouldn't that be at the bottom? And that's because the code pen doesn't have a height on it and you need an explicit height in order for it to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a height on it. And the height of that is just going to be 100vh, which is the uh, a viewport height that would be 100% high. And when we give that a save, you'll now see that it's sticking to the bottom, sticking to the top, and then the difference between the two are then split. Now let's move on. Let's do this right here, which is the uh, the editors that we have. So that has a class of code on it, and we can inspect the element real quick on that. You see, we have div with a class of code, and then we have three items, which is editor, editor, editor for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we can display grid on that. And then we will equally size them with grid template columns. We'll repeat three, one FR. And that will put them all side by side. Good. I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's move up to this, uh, this head right here. So a header with a class of pen. So we'll go down here, dot pen. And we need, let's look at what the, the different pieces of code are inside of it. We've got the pen details. And beside that, we have a bunch of buttons. And this is very similar to the one that we looked at earlier when we looked at the Flexbox, Flexbox versus the grid. I want the pen details to take up as much room as it can, uh, minus whatever size the, the buttons in the avatar are in. So we'll display grid right there. So grid template columns, one FR. We'll do the same thing that we did previously. And then grid auto flow column. And then what that will do is it will stick all the additional items to the right there. Now these are being stretched. The image is not being stretched. So we can align items center. 
and that will uh, get us in a good spot for there. We'll we'll deal with some. Here we'll put a little bit of grid gap on there as well. 10 px, bump them off from each other. Good. I'm really happy with that. So that was the header. We did the code. Uh, the preview. We need. We've got an iframe in here. We want that to uh, sort of spit span the entire place. And all we need to do for that is preview display grid. And by default, it will be one column by one column. And the default item is stretch. So there's nothing else that we need to do uh, for that specific one. Uh, and then the settings here is there's there's no need to do grid. So good. We just did the entire um, layout here by just saying grid three times and and uh, laying them out. Now let's go to get into each of the individual ones and and start working with it. So uh, let's start at the top here and, and start some styling on some amazing pen name. And that again, that is our pen. So I'll do background, black, border bottom, 5px solid, and the code pen color is 343436. And that's actually a color we use fairly often. So let's put that into a variable called gray. And then let's go up to the top here on the root selector and set the variable gray to be that. Oh, did I spell it wrong? G-R-E-Y, G-R-E-Y, good. In Canada, sometimes we spell it with an A and a padding of 10 px on that header. Good. Now our header's looking in pretty good shape. I'm pretty happy with that. It's it's an all nicely aligned. Um, let's go ahead and style the buttons. And they each have a class of button. So the background of each of our buttons is going to be the variable gray border 0 color white padding 10 px And a border radius, no, 10 px. No, that's too much. 5 px, good. And a font size of 15 px. Awesome, looking pretty, pretty good to me. We also have the concept of small buttons down here. So, what I'm going to do to that is say anything with a button that has a small on it, we're simply just going to change the font size to 12 and make the padding 4 px. Okay, we got these little buttons down here and these little buttons here. And then these are our regular large buttons. Good. Also, this button right here has a class of dirty on it. If we look at the answer here, it'll give us this little whoop. So what we can do is select a button that has a dirty state. And in order to get this little line right here, um, what I've done is I've used a before attribute. So say before. And the background to that is going to be yellow. It's my yellow FFC600. And we'll do the whole song and dance if you've used a, uh, a before before. So say display block, content, nothing, height, 2px, width. It's going to be 100%. But we don't want it to go all the way across here. Let's actually look at what we're dealing with there. That looks pretty good. But we're going to make it position absolute. And um, from the left, it's going to be 3px. So now we run into a bit of an issue where it's going all the way across. So we go back up to our button and make that position relative, and that will put it inside of it. But the problem is that if the button is 100% wide, then it goes all the way across. But we want it to go start from 3 pixels over. So really, we want it 100 pixels less, 6, 3 pixels on each side. So we can use calc for that. So 100% minus 6px. Looking good. And then, I don't know, top 3px as well. Good. I'm happy with that. Now let's move on to these editors here. Each editor in itself, if we open some of those up, open up the code, go into the editor. The editor header itself needs to be side by side. So if we look at this editor header, we've got uh, the little drop down on the right, whereas the rest of the items are over here. So the way we can do that is grab the editor header, display grid on that, and we will give ourselves three columns, auto, 1FR, and auto. And what that should do 
is the middle item here, the CSS, that will span as wide as it needs to, less the size of the but buttons on the right and the left. Good, but I don't want the buttons. The buttons are currently now stretching, so how do I do that? We'll justify items center. No, that's not what I wanted. It align items center. There we go. They're no longer stretching. I'll put a little bit of padding on the header, 5px. Looking good. And uh, we'll also put some grid gap, 5px on that. Good. Now just a little bit of color. Background is going to be RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.1. And what that's going to do is it's going to sort of see through whatever the actual uh, background of the editor is. So let's go back up to maybe we'll put the selector with our editor so we don't get uh, too gnarly. Where did our editor? Oh, it's the code here. So editor pen header. Put that in there. Now our each of our code blocks the background to that is going to be pound, and I just pulled this off of the CodePen website, 1B, 2B, 3, 4. That causes this to be unreadable. Let's actually just go up to CodePen and just set the color to be white on that in general, and that'll make everything white. That's generally what we need happening rather than having to reset it on each one. Good, now let's go to the editor, and that's each individual one. We have three editors, and of the editors, we have uh, editor header, and then we have this editor code, which should be the rest. And you see that it's currently not being as high as it should be. It should take up this entire space. So we need to now make the editor itself display grid. And we want the header to take up as much room as it needs. And then we want the code to take up the rest of the room. So say grid template rows one or auto. That's the header. And then one FR to take up the rest. And that didn't seem like it did much, but if now if you hover over top of the header and the code, you'll see that they are now taking up the entire space. And then the editor code in itself also needs to be display grid because the child of the code, which is there is the gutter, and then there is the input. So those two things now need to, to go below each other. So editor code, that one will be display grid. And the gutter is going to be very, very small. And then the this text area is going to take up the rest of the area. So we'll say grid template columns auto 1fr. <whistles> Starting to look good. Oh, the reason why this one didn't span is because I've been I was I was playing with it and then I, I set it in line width to it, which is not what we want. So I'm just going to delete that and you'll see that it goes back and snaps to. The gutter is going to be as wide as it needs to be. Um, and we're going to take these spans of the class of line number and we're going to make them block so that they go onto their own line. So we'll grab the class on each of those numbers, editor number, display block. And that should make them stack. And I believe put a little bit of padding on either side of that. Good. Now let's go to our editor input. This is a little text area that we have here. It has a class of editor input. We're going to make it resize none. Take off that little thing. Background none. Border zero. Color gray. Make the font size 16 and line height. 25. I was just playing around with that. Whoa, PX, not not a multiple of itself. Oh, that's not that's not any good. You see, it's not lining up here. So I don't know. You probably have to. There's probably some scientific way to to line it up, but I'm just gonna cheat it. Ah, good enough. 19. Yeah, 19 pixels looks good to me. So it's lining up. Uh, what else do we have to do here? I think, oh, we got this footer here. We're done. I think we're done all of the alignment stuff using grid. And I think that the last little piece is to uh, go down to this last little one, which is the settings. Go down here and say settings, padding, put a little maybe 10px on that. That's too much. 5px. Good. good. Background is going to be that gray color. Good. No, that's the same color as the 
we'll make it just black. Good. And border dash top one px solid gray. Looking good, looking good. There's a couple little things if you look at the answer. I've got a couple more borders here and there and, and, and whatnot, but I'll let you uh, sort of spend some time finessing the the borders and whatnot. The the idea here is that we've we built all of this stuff with grid, um, and we're actually making it look uh, pretty good. It's it's pretty easy to snap together an application that uh, seems relatively complex just with using grid nested inside of each other a couple times over. So hopefully you enjoy that one. I'll see you in the next one.